Absolutely, no, Expo North is great! Hey guys, it's Deja Edge and we're at Expo North where we're gonna see stuff and learn stuff and just feel a part of it, it's gonna be really good. We're gonna see films, we're gonna hear music, we're gonna learn stuff from the conferences and we're just gonna feel a part of it, it's gonna be really good. This is my third year, this is the second day at Expo North of 2017 and it's gonna be really, really good. I hope you're gonna like it. If you skip to the way, way end, you're gonna see music, but all day it's gonna be conferences. But it's got a lot of music we're gonna see. So enjoy it. We're also gonna meet a lot of people, and you're gonna love it. This is gonna be a long vlog, but I'm gonna love it, and you're gonna love it. So let's begin. X North, 2017, second day. Sorry, Moon Kids. I know it. That's just when the explosive good bit comes in, but uh, no, it, it sounded great to my ears. That's All The City Girls. Um, I take it it's a new tune by you guys, right? Yeah. Yep. Hello, all of Debs' fans. Uh, I'm Miles and I work for a startup called Robotico. Uh, Robotico are based in Edinburgh, and we've got a brand new educational product uh, called Marty the Robot. Uh, Marty is a very exciting robot toy. I saw him yesterday, he like, dances and he's right now in a football stadium. Absolutely. He could kick football. Well, How do you program him? I'll show you if you like. So if we yeah. come this way with the camera. Um, Marty's great for kids because you can start off by using a simple platform called Scratch. Now Scratch allows you to code but it uses simple block instructions rather than a more complicated, you know, typing out numbers Yeah, I've and seen letters. this at Cody Jojo. This is yeah. what I so see all the kids doing. I'm going to give you a wee demo here, okay? So I'll just yeah. start at the beginning again. Okay, so if I go to an event here, I can drag different instructions across. In this case, let's say when the space bar is pressed. And I'm going to just change it just to show you some different examples. I'm going to say the letter A. Okay. okay so when A is pressed, if I go to more blocks here, I can then give Marty instructions. So here we've got get ready. Always enjoy a bit of a wiggle in the morning. So we'll put that in there. Let's walk a couple of steps forward just to see how Marty moves and maybe a couple of steps backward. And then Marty's pretty good at football as well. So I'm gonna, oh yeah, let's see him do that. Kick with the left leg and then just for luck, also kick with the right leg. So Ooh. if I can change that one here. Oh my, he's old. moving. He's always away already. He's jumping the gun a bit. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm, if I then press the letter A, Yep. Marty will then follow all these instructions. Ooh. So there you go. So That's an action. Bit of a wiggle. <laughs> and then Marty should begin to walk forward once he. Yep, oh. there we go. Got this kind of sidey knees movement. <laughs> there we go. And let's see how he kicks as well. There you oh, go. Oh, eagle's kicking. And yeah, that was. Should be one more. Yeah, it should be. There, yeah, there we go. Okay. A bit slow, but you'll get there. I think it's early in the morning, you know. But if you like, you can experiment as well if you're programming. Yeah. So you could, you could begin to get Marty to walk a bit. Quicker. I can see why games will, uh, kids will like this. This is something that we call Cody or Jojo, I must say. Yeah, well, I think coding clubs will really take to Marty yeah. because there's a, there's a number of reasons. Marty's got a great progression, okay? <laughs> so you can start with Scratch, but then you can move on to Python, C++, Java. You can start with our basic uh, circuit boards, which allows you to do these movements, but then you can add a Raspberry Pi, you can add a camera, for example. If you add a camera and a Raspberry Pi, you can get then get Marty to track the color orange. Ooh. So we've got an orange football over there. Yeah, you do. And by way of example, you could have that, that Marty follows it automatically. Okay, so we'll make sure that Marty can follow the orange this ball. This is so cool. Football. I'm taking, I've so not yeah, got one of these already, but this is a business say your card. card to you. There you are, Robotical's yeah. business card. We've got a lot here. I will give that to Craig, who's part of Claudia Jojo. So I'll yeah, give it no, to him. please, please do that. And, yeah. um, I'll tell Robert also. Like I say, it's a big target for us is to it get is. into the coding clubs and schools in general. Uh, we think Marty is suitable from age eight all the way to university. I think There's it's probably for me. And, adult, <laughs> uh, and, and beyond, you know. I, so. I want to take home with me. Look, he's blue. <laughs> this is cute. So we'll come to Michael, and I just want to show you um, a few of the films that Michael's made to whet your appetite, okay? Never Time and Never Place, 1983. You were at this point working for the BBC in Scotland. I went to, the, I went to work at the BBC in Scotland in the, art, in the arts department, and uh, the reason I went there really was because um, they said that, that um, the BBC was trying to encourage people to go outside London and they would pay you uh, an airfare 
they pay you more money to be outside London, <laughs> and they'd also pay you an, an airfare every weekend to go back home. And when I got there, I told them that I lived in Paris. Yeah. <laughs> BBC in Glasgow very, very thoughtfully flew into Paris every weekend. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but you, um, you first picked up a camera in a college in Edinburgh uh -huh. that you found in a drawer. And you were a teacher at that point. You I was a teacher. Point. Well, I came, to, I came to Scotland first because um, I got a job as... I wanted to be an actor when I left university. I came to the, I got a job as the acting ASM at the Royal Lyceum Theatre in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. Richard Eyre was the associate director at that time. And uh, it was very soon I realised that I, I was not going to be an actor. And thinking to myself, I've got a degree in politics, philosophy and economics. What am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of my acting career. But, and I got a job teaching. In those days, uh, we're talking, you know, talking about uh, late, early 70s. You could just get a job. I mean, it's an extraordinary thought, but you could. And I walked into this place called the Ramsey Technical Institute in Portobello in Edinburgh and um, got a job as a teacher that afternoon. Because I, I just said I had a degree from Oxford. Everybody nearly fell over backwards. <laughs> what doing here? I mean, you went to film school at the prestigious National Film School in its inaugural year? In the, in the very first year, yeah. yeah. Because what, what happened was that when I got to, to the Further Education College, I was looking for things to do with the with the kids because they were they were apprentices basically and I, I basically had to come in to teach liberal studies they were barely younger than me these these guys that I was teaching and extremely um, let's say not really wanting to be there <laughs> put it this way <laughs> the only way I was trying to think of things desperately things and um, I found this camera and I, I suggested to a group of hairdressers girls and and uh, gas fitters boys and um, to, to improvise a film about what it's like to be 17 or 18, you know, and have relationships with girls. We did it in a studio. I had no idea about filmmaking at all, and none at all. I, it was an old Bolex 16 millimeter camera. It was new at the time, but you call it old now. Actually. It was a 16 millimeter camera, yet to uh, wind it up. You shot film in. I, the only film I could get was reversal film, which is film that you get from Boots, the chemists, in 100, in 100 uh, whatever it is, foot, 100 foot bobbins like that. And then you send it off to be like a, like a photograph, and, and they turn it into film. But it's a positive, negative. So if you make a cut in it, if you make one edit in it, that's the end. So it was a, a great lesson. Anyway, I made this, this film. And to cut a long story short, for me, I was St. Paul on the road to Damascus. I really was. I was struck by a bolt of lightning. I, I'd never had any film education whatsoever. But I picked up that camera, and I just thought, oh my god, I know how to do this. I know what the language is. And I don't know how I knew that I knew how to film something as the, and to give character to what I was actually looking at, not just the face of the person or the expre emotional expression. I realized that the exterior world in, in, in a film is an expression of the interior world of the characters. This is the one session in all these years that I'd have said I would have, I would have liked to have carried on. I really would have. I think, I think, I think everyone would agree no, with that. Great so yeah, so we are we're here from BBC The Social, which is BBC Scotland's relatively new platform for younger audiences, which I think is um, kind of well overdue, we can all agree. So The Social came about um, when we sort of realised that there wasn't a lot being made by BBC Scotland for that younger demographic. The average age of an audience member was sort of 45 plus. And uh, we did a lot of audience testing with the uh, targeted demographic and, and they weren't really watching anything. They didn't really recognise any of the content. Uh, it also, during the, the 2014 referendum, it became very obvious that a lot of young people in Scotland had things to say. So uh, there needed to be a platform uh, just for them, for, for them to, to, to do that. So The Social was born. Um, it's an online platform. We publish content made by young creatives in Scotland on the BBC social media pages. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Tumblr, Instagram. We make content that's authentic to the social media environment and authentic to the platforms. So, um, you know, something for Facebook might be very different to a piece of content being made for YouTube. Uh, we'll get into a bit more detail about that, about that later. And the idea behind the social was to develop the next generation of content creators and, and media stars. So the social is all about the onward journey. We're very kind of conscious of that. Um, it's a place to kind of fine tune your skills, 
figure out what you want to do and, uh, and, and, and we help you develop those skills and, um, and so yeah, so we're all, about, we're all about looking to the future. Number three, the big shots. The guys that know everything there is to know about alcohol. Oh hey, that's not how you pour a pint. Excuse me? That's not how you pour a pint. You've got to twist the glass. You've got to tilt it a wee bit more to the left. Last call was 15 minutes ago and you're telling me how to pour a pint. I appreciate that you're trying to help. Just don't explain to me how to pour a pint 15 minutes before closing. Are you Hannah? Yes. yes. Uh, you were just on the BBC Social, weren't you? Yes, I was. Yeah. I'm also a YouTuber. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I'm Danger Lev. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is the first time we've just met. Hi. <laughs> um, what's it been like being part of BBC Social? Incredible. Um, with the whole um, output of my work and stuff, it's just rolled and rolled. I've ended up being a writer for um, a Scottish comedy, a well-known Scots squad. Yeah. I've ended up being a writer for them and um, don't have to work in a bar anymore. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. God, yeah. I worked at McDonald's. I yeah, hated that. Yeah. It's great to get out of there and not be part of the catering <laughs> bit, part of the digital bit. Yeah, you know the feeling of it all. Do you like just writing comedy or other stuff? I've never actually written anything before. This is all, like, I've never been involved in film. Like they said, I was a photographer at first. And yeah, me too. Now, yeah, so the, from now on, it's been, like, very much um, acting, comedy. We've sent off pilot TV shows. I've worked with multiple production companies. It's the best outlet for someone this age, our age, at least. How old are you? I'm 21. 21. I'm 22. Oh, See? Oh, really good. <laughs> it's a brilliant... I filmed that when I was 20. You did? Yeah. So. It, you had yellow hair, and now you look like yeah, it. There's, like, a little bit of a blonde streak still there. I dyed my hair red, so it's different. <laughs> Slightly, but it's pretty. Uh, I hopefully will come to the BBC Social later. If yeah, not, uh, what's going to be there? The, what, uh, the, the Mercure? Club. Yeah, later. Oh, just a few drinks, socialising, blah, blah, blah. We're all going to be there, definitely, so... Um, and we're expecting a lot more people just to come in and ask questions and get involved. Send them a Facebook message afterwards. They're more than willing to look at anything content-wise. Cool. I'm going to keep in touch with you. Brilliant. Yes, yes. yes, cool. Where do you live? I live in Air. Air. I'm, 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 I'm going to Glasgow on Saturday. Oh, but, well, we're, I'll be in Glasgow all week next week. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Send me a message as well. We're trying to collaborate. Yes, yes. We need to collab. That's collaborate. Right. <laughs> Okay, our third and final BBC Music Introducing guests on this week's show are on a bit of a bus with all day. Their roots are very much here in the Highlands, with Fort William. Depending on the state of your hearing and how loud you like your guitars, it is time to turn the volume knob on your radio right up. Let's hear it for Bloodline! <laughs> I'm going to be in here learning about how to build your Instagram, so I'm going to be a while. Hello! This is my first time in Inverness. Welcome! Thank you! Oh my god, I'm being filmed. I'm a vlogger. Is that going to be like that for the whole... No, no, no. Okay, good. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Zoe Timmers, and um, welcome to Build Your Instagram Profile, uh, where I hope that you'll take away um, some thoughts, well, quite a lot, I'm about to hit you with a lot of information, so if you've got a notepad, and yes, lots of people have notepads, that's great. Yes, hopefully you'll learn how to build your Instagram feed, whether you're a brand, a business, or an individual. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll all be as big as Beyonce on Instagram. The Instagram workshop is still on, it's almost gone over for like three hours. It's getting up to three hours anyway. Uh, I'm gonna head off, there's gonna be a party on soon, so we'll meet a lot of people. The Instagram workshop was good, there was a lot of insights on Instagram and how to make it bigger and how to edit your uh, photos before you put it actually on Instagram. It's really good. Who's the best person you interviewed today, Siobhan? The best person I interviewed was Michael Radford. I love Michael Radford. He made all sorts of movies, he made. Oh, um, wait, I was in that one! I was there! Yeah, was really another good. time, another place. Yeah! Yeah, I look very different with all this makeup all. 
Um, yeah, no, and he made mention of events which we didn't get the chance to talk to. Because if you ever get a chance to talk to Michael Radford, you'll find out that there's never such such a thing as one Michael Radford story. There are loads of Michael Radford stories. It was really good. He was we very wanted that conference to go on and on and yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Did you like the story where he said that he gave Bill for sight the idea for local hearing? Yeah, I also that, like, the telephone box. Yeah, I also like the idea that he picked up a camera and he just knew what he was doing. Yeah, and he's there picked up camera as well. That's how I felt picking up this camera. He was a teacher, found a camera in a drawer, and started filming. And that shows what duty is because he was doing like 50 years ahead of the rest of us what we're doing now. I mean that's how I felt when I picked up a camera too. I had no camera experience, just video experience. That's how I felt. You're the next Michael Radford. Maybe. <laughs> I doubt that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a girl. <laughs> you never know. Uh, I'll see you later Siobhan. I hope we see you next year. Yeah, absolutely. No, Expo North is great! I just got a text from Blair McDonald. Does anyone know Blair McDonald? He used to run a network and he's an independent music publisher now. And he's written me the most amazing text and it just says, Expo North is so inclusive, he says there's no ego and there's no arrogance about it. And I'm going, I'm so touched because that is what we want. We want it open, free, access for everyone, removing all of these barriers to access. And of course that's the best thing about Expo North as well, is that we have amazing people like Josh Rabinovitz at the bar. Well sorry, Josh, Rabinovitz didn't at the bar. <laughs> it's Josh Rabinovitz, he's standing over there. Amazing man, and he's here, he's not sequestered off somewhere, having some sort. You can go talk to him and access it, and that's what we want, we want free access for everybody. So, um, now last night I did a week of kind of, this is actually my last festival. Do you know, it's been an amazing experience. Um, Jan, our press and marketing, she'd written, it's been a roller coaster ride on the Expo North Express, and it kind of has, it's been absolutely amazing. I have met some of the most creative, the most inspirational businesses in the Highlands and Islands, and it really has been fantastic. And I'm totally going to miss it, absolutely, but certainly not for the next couple of months. We'll <laughs> <laughs> have a wee break. So, if you've all got your glasses, we're going to have a toast, and it's to partnerships. So, raise your glasses. This is to partnerships, everybody. Thank you so much.
North. It's still raining over Expo North, but you know what's still going on on the last night. It's been a good night at Expo North. I've heard so much music, learned a lot about filmmaking, seeing so many games in action, and just seeing totally so many towns, people, and organisations, especially BBC Social. It was just great meeting them. Um, speaking of like people, uh, my mum somehow turned out at Expo North. She didn't have a ticket. I don't know why she turned up. But then she showed me why she turned up. She had my phone. I had my phone for the whole day. I had it in the bathroom. Then an hour later, coming out of the bathroom, mum turns up and she has a phone. Why? How do you have my phone? I didn't even give it to you. And then she left. An hour later, I went to River Spoons, got dinner, looked at my phone on my Facebook. And on Facebook, someone posted on my Facebook. I was like, outrageous! Why do you post my Facebook? And basically, what they posted on my Facebook was, Oh, I'm a silly sausage. I lost my phone. And someone got caught up with my mom. And my mom just, like, just gave the phone. So, whoever posted on my uh, Facebook, I was like, delete, delete, delete. But um, later on, after like another hour, um, some guy said, are you Debs? Are you, are you Debs? And I was like, yeah, I'm Debs. Uh, who are you? Oh, I'm Craig. Uh, my friend found your phone. So I just 
like to say, um, did you find your phone? And he was like, yes, I found my phone. Then Craig can just be more to himself. And I got his business card and I actually just like talking to him. It was really good because he studied radio and he is a part of a lot of events or venues. So it's like, oh, here's my business card. He gave me my business card. It's like, that's just networking. And then later on, I actually met the guy who found my phone. Johnny, so thank you also for finding my phone and giving me your business card because um, you're a musician, a teacher, and I was just like, this is so cool. Me, it was actually worth losing my phone because networking it was so good. So there was actually a point losing my phone because networking with them too and getting more business cards, it was really good. Yes, that is a weird way of networking. Lose your phone, they find it, and you just like, yeah, just... A connection. <laughs> I'm actually glad that actually happened. <laughs> it's been a long day, guys. Sorry. Um, but it's really been good networking at Extra North. I've seen stuff. I've learned stuff. And I've felt a part of it. I hope you guys have loved this vlog and enjoy your time at Extra North. And you've just seen so much and learned so much and felt a part of it and want to come back next year. Extra North. I can't wait for 2018. Whoever's taking Amanda Miller's place, hopefully, will be a great person because she's leaving. I'm still questions to who would take our place because I'm just gonna miss her um anyway I'm gonna shut up and go head to bed and just let the music continue Expo North and hopefully we hear some great news about November Lights and just means less and Indigo Velvet and it just keeps on going whoever was at um Expo North good luck and it, it's just uh, it was great just being there Please give this vlog a thumbs up and comment below and subscribe to me, Danger Debs. Thank you, everybody who I've met at Expo North. It was great meeting all you. There's so many pics and so many people I've just met. So I was like, thank you so much uh, for being part of the vlog. Um, anyway, I'm going to head to bed. Good night, people. Enjoy Expo North. See you next year, maybe. And I've got to stop rambling about Expo North. I just love talking about it. Anyway, bye, guys. Love Expo North.